Yeah, but something that that happened, uh, this would have been last week, that I think is a big deal that anybody that watched college football can appreciate. Oh, yeah, yeah. In my opinion, the most electric college football player that I've personally ever seen in my life. Reggie Bush has officially been able to reestablish ties with USC. So the NCAA, obviously, everybody knows by now when the whole... um, if somebody is considered amateur or not because of benefits and things like that, Reggie Bush and OJ Mayo were the two big ass from USC that fell victim to that, where USC had to officially cut ties with both of them for, uh, and it couldn't be longer than 10 years. And this is the 10th year of that. Um, I mean, it was just a crazy situation to think that Reggie Bush, probably the, like I said, you could debate top five, most electric college football players that we've that, that have ever played the game. Right. The fact that USC had to essentially act as if he never played there, can't even talk about him, mention him, like it was just unreal. He's got his eyes been removed. Yeah, and when you think about man, when Reggie Bush was at USC, that was must see TV. We can all go through the list of just electric moments that stand out. For me, my personal is the Fresno State game where he's running up the sidelines, stops with the cut back across the field. I mean, it was just insane. Like Reggie is Reggie. Reggie is USC. And when you talk about OJ Mayo from a basketball standpoint, he was the highest drafted player for USC for basketball. Man, like, it's nuts to think that because the NCAA deems somebody ineligible because of benefits that they received, that you have to cut ties, especially when we talk about just how crazy it is that those two athletes in particular have generated millions upon millions of dollars for that university while they were playing. They were selling their jerseys while yeah. they were playing. But if they try to profit in any way, shape, or form for themselves on that, that they would be viewed as ineligible and all these other things to go along with it. Yeah, I can't remember exactly what it was. It's something to do with the car dealership. It's yeah. something to do with like his parents living in an mm-hmm. apartment or, or some type of place in, out yeah. in San Diego, correct? Which is compared to all the things USC was receiving and benefit to Reggie Bush playing the... wasn't even close. Yeah, just the social presence that USC had mm-hmm. at that time. And it was, it was because of Leonard and Bush. It was yeah, absolutely. Two. It was, I mean, that school was a dynasty for what those two to three years yeah. you just thought they were going to win every game like it was a shock that they lost to texas yes in yes. that championship they were such a powerhouse i remember my brother had a liner jersey he liked usc so i was always rooting against them they were mm-hmm. like right now kind of the past what 10 15 years how the patriots yeah. are to the nfl uh-huh. that's how i viewed them okay whenever i was growing up because time goes a lot slower when you're a kid so that yes. three-year run seems like forever absolutely probably the same way how some kids are thinking with alabama and mm-hmm. clemson although that is reality right now because that yeah. that run has been too long for both those teams someone needs to start Stop stepping it, up man appreciate dynasties so, i mean it's good they are good for because the warriors you would say are good for the nba or nah, we're good. I, I ain't going whoa, there whoa, 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 whoa. i'm not going there it now. Gives, they, the i'm heat, not going there like, now. what about the heat the heat is totally different than the warriors what are we Dude, talking about i'm just talking about it gives you someone to root against it, no 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 brings no, better no, no, no. that's that's drastically different <laughs> i'm just throwing it out there that okay heat if they would have added oh KD could have came to the heat as well yeah. then you could have got that <laughs> you're not about to tell me what the warriors did when KD went over there is good for basketball i don't want to hear it <laughs> i don't <laughs> uh, it's a tough call because it's good for an, uh, entertainment purpose i just thought it, it brought an if element. you were from oakland you enjoyed it. if you were from the bay area you enjoyed it yeah, it's just tough. I mean, there were close matchups though. Were they Even really he, though? Th- with some of those Rockets uh, series, I don't, I don't I, know. it was never that close, bro. To me, it if, wasn't. If Paul didn't go down, that's that's a whole thing. I don't yeah. agree with. That. I still think the Warriors would have won, but a I lot of people, so well. a lot of people think the Rockets had legitimate shots. Even last year, whenever KD mm-hmm. went down, I knew the Rockets were going to choke. Anyone that watches the game knew they were yeah. going to choke anyway. But that's but. why I put my money on the Raptors because I knew when that came that down, was a joke, we were winning. <laughs> I said, I believe you, that Kawhi. Was, come on, I believe dude. you. Come on, dude. <laughs> I think KD said something about that recently, or maybe it was last year. Mm. Maybe it just popped up on my feed recently. I don't okay. know. But he basically said, like, yeah, we would have won this if I didn't go down or Clay went down. Let's just be <laughs> real about this whole thing. Well, I mean, when they were healthy, let's be real, it was nobody was going to beat them, period. Right. Yeah, but I knew they weren't healthy. And I knew Durant coming back still wasn't going to be as healthy as Durant pre-injury. We're good. <laughs> and that's why I put my money where my mouth is, and I won, and I appreciate you for being a real one and paying up your debt. You know what I mean? Oh, that, that, that meant a lot to me. That was a good time. Yeah, man. 
but back to USC, I mean, I would put them for a three, four year run yeah. up with these types of teams where yes, you're indeed. just like this this was a dynasty. They were overpowering. Um and I don't know how much uh you've heard recently at like Bush coming out and doing any mm-hmm. interviews or anything like that. But the thing, because I think I would handle it different than him, potentially. I don't aye, know. Aye. He, he is he has a different perspective than me, though. I, I would be kind of bitter about this whole thing and yeah, just be like, I definitely see USC, that. get out of here. Like, I yeah. gave you all this. I don't even want to talk to you guys. Mm-hmm. I don't want to associate with you guys at all. Right. I know the product I put out on the field. Yeah. I know how good I was. Mm-hmm. We had championship. You can't take any of that stuff away Correct. from me. You can act like you did, but whatever. I, I think I would have that standpoint. Yeah. Like, all of a sudden, 10 years, now you want to be all cool with me and right. stuff. I think the situation, I think why Reggie is more... I guess he he almost came off as like remorseful and just happy to be back associated with them is because I don't think it was necessarily USC's decision. I think it was more NCAA's decision. That's how USC had to respond. Yeah. Kind of like cover their ass a little bit. Correct. Yeah. So they, it was like, we're going to, because remember they had, they lost scholarships as well and they had all these other sanctions and then it was like, okay, you also got to cut ties too. So it was like, all right, if this is all a part of it, then this is what we'll do for that. I mean, similar to, uh, to like SMU as well. I mean, granted, we were younger, a lot younger, if even born. I wasn't, I wasn't then, yeah. Alive. But researching it as we were older, like it was a similar situation with the whole death penalty thing and stuff like that, where it's not necessarily that the university wanted to do that, but more so they had to just comply with the NCAA, excuse me, was laying down in terms of rules, which is why I think the consensus here is a lot of people don't like the NCAA because yeah. of how they will market and profit off of these players in these universities. But when the individual, tries to profit on their self they're not allowed to and it's the only thing that's like that in college i mean you look at anybody that's there just for academics <laughs> dude yeah i could have went can. to pit and you know whenever i was mm-hmm. 18 to 22 been at school and then mm-hmm. doing a side business for myself like easily and, and then people were like well you're on a scholarship so that should pay for it well people are on academic scholarships as well there's numerous people that have academic scholarships that go and do an internship for a Fortune 500 company and be making good money while being on that academic full scholarship. So when people try to make that case of, well, you know, as, as athletes, they're paid to be there and this and that, so they shouldn't even be complaining. Well, why isn't like that when it comes to the academic element of it? When that guy's majoring in biology or that guy's a, that, that young lady is a, a marketing major and she's working for this company as well while still being in college. This is the only time where... Oh, it's amateurism. You can't do that. If it was like that across the board for every major, for every student in college, that's one thing. But that's not the case. When it comes to this, it only applies to athletes. And that's the part that makes everybody say, you know what? This is this is crazy. This doesn't make any sense. Because like you said, any other major you have, if you're not an athlete, oh, you can go profit on it right now and be fine. Yeah. I wonder, it's probably got so much to do with control where, I mean, they're starting, they, they have that rollout right now yeah. where players can start mm-hmm. profiting off their image and likeness, but probably it, so much had to be like, all right, if we don't control this or just say a no to it, mm-hmm. all these players are going to be making money. I don't know how we're going to be able to get our hands on it. Yes. So I just want to control the situation mm-hmm. completely and not have to worry about that at all. That's probably yeah. what it had to do with. Um, but with Bush, dude, he, I mean, his answer to it though makes me think i would hopefully have this perspective because it was it was it was really cool how he responded to the whole thing his main thing is he wants to go back to usc for the kids Mm because he said he remembered whenever he was in school and he would have like marcus allen on the sidelines some of these celebrities some of the just former usc greats on the sideline cheering him on giving him encouragement and just being around and he's like i want to do that for kids right Mm -hmm. now growing up so that is why I one of the reasons he was excited, in which I'm like, all right, that's really cool. That's that's a good reason not to be better than. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, I mean, Reggie doing it for the kids. Shout out to Reggie. And he, I mean, his impact in terms of what he's been doing with his foundation and stuff in the the Southern California area has definitely been well noted. I mean, he's a big, big guy in the community and stuff like that out there. So, kudos to him for that too. How do you think? See, this could just be completely off the wall. Maybe we don't mm-hmm. really don't really have any answers for this. How do you think this is going to turn out with the image and likeness thing? I don't know, honestly, man. I think this is You uh, think it's going to be the wild wild west to start off? Do you think it'll be the, held back too much where it's like, all right, there isn't too much difference anyway with these new rules? This is put it like this. I think year one, it's not going to be anything crazy because I think people are still going to be trying to figure out how to 
maximize it. Yeah. I think once you get a couple of players that find a way to really maximize it and start creating a model of, hey, this is how you profit off of these type of situations, then I think the NCAA is going to try to get some more of somewhat more regulations in that department okay because i think i mean it's going to continue to to go on and evolve but i think the first year or two people are still gonna be trying to figure it out okay like what it, what's the difference between what we're doing right now compared to what this is now okay now that we know the rules it's going to take somebody to say okay well this is how we can profit off that this is what we can do to make it better but it still isn't how it should be just yet where if a car dealership wants to pay this guy 50 grand to go do this. They're still not fully able to do that just yet. With the new rule. Yeah, yeah, right now really? it's still. Mm-hmm. What's the what's yeah. the hold up with that? It's the NCAA. Okay. They still have they they still have parameters and boundaries around it cuz if that's the case then man shoot whoever's starring at pit right now uh uh Pat Jones for example, he could go in Jim Short he could say, "You know what? Man, we want to pay you 60 grand to drive our car." And, you know, do commercials for us. It's not allowed to do that right now. NCAA is still not allowing that. So that's what I'm saying. It's still not even fully to that extent just yet. <laughs> exactly. It doesn't even make sense. What else can you do? Because what's, differ- what's the difference between that and having mm-hmm. a brand come up to you for your social media page, your mm-hmm. TikTok, your Instagram or whatever, yeah. and say, hey, can you just do like a 15-second story mm-hmm doing something with my product yeah. what's the difference between doing commercials hey, for talk, talk to the ncaa <laughs> man i mean realistically when we think about the fact that has the ncaa ever made sense when you got a guy like aj green for example right who was dominating georgia was selling his jersey he took one of his game jerseys and sold it and got suspended <laughs> well just think about it i'm just saying like you know what their argument is with the whole jersey <laughs> selling is they never have the names on them when they're selling <laughs> Like, like, I just don't understand. Like, it doesn't make sense. It, it makes zero sense. Or how I forgot what, what university the kid went to, but he had like a big YouTube page where he was getting paid for his the YouTube. Kicker. Yeah, yeah. The kicker. He was yeah, getting yeah. paid for his YouTube, and they're like, nah, that's a violation. Well, because that was. Where, where does. I don't understand that. And I mentioned the social media page doing an ad, mm-hmm. but that was something I was thinking too. Like, yeah. these student athletes, they could just make YouTube pages or yeah. Instagram pages, just build those up somehow. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you might have to pay someone to do the right, production right. and everything, but if you could start building your brand up that way while you're in school, mm-hmm. while you're like an elite talent and yeah. showcasing all this skill, and you know, it, and that's the thing, it's you're if you're doing really good in college, like you're hot, like you want to take advantage. You should of that, I guess that prime time space that you're getting people's attention. And that's where you're gonna have some of your most loyal fans. I mean, yeah. I think to this day, I still have some of my most diehard fans or JMU fans. Yeah, because that's where you were at for four years, guaranteed. And that was all that was going on. Whereas in the NFL, you get it's more of a business. You're here for a season or two, or this is happening, or that. It's more business and political at that level versus at the collegiate level, where it's still, man, this is pure. This is mom and pop style right here. And I don't, I know some of the purity might get taken out of it, but as long as it's not a relationship between you and the school, Mm -hmm. money wise, then I still think some of that purity could stay where. You're trying to take advantage of what you're doing on the field by going to businesses and mm-hmm. doing stuff that is off the field. So you have those type of relationships okay. going on as opposed to in the NFL, it's between organization and Right, player. right. So if USC were to say, hey, we're going to cut you a check for 50 grand to do this while you're playing it- on scholarship. Yeah, and yeah. and if it's based off playing time or you know, right, that's that is different. So that's what I mean. Where yeah. I still think some of the purity could be kept there, even though it's not going to be a hundred percent anymore. No, but you're, you're absolutely evolved. right. It, it does. It it would add to the purity. And this is the thing. Okay, granted, you still were getting a scholarship check, or for some of the guys that were getting Pell Grant checks, all of that still played into some of the money you were receiving. It's just the NCAA wants to dictate who's allowed to send you that money. Yeah, like. I received Pell Grant checks, and that's based off of just your parents' income and, and your housing and things like that. So it's okay for the government to send me this money. But if I would have went down the street and this car dealership or or this restaurant said, "Hey, Arthur, we want to give you five grand, same exact money, same exact same exact dollar amount. We want to give you five grand, though. Just come in here and wear this shirt and take a picture." I couldn't do that. Like yeah. to me, I, I just don't. It's they say they like to regulate it all, as we've said. They they want to have their hand on it, and that's the biggest issue. Yeah, no, definitely. Well, hopefully it's going in the right direction. Seems yeah. like it, at least. Uh, but 
all in all, I, I like it for Reggie Bush. Yeah, Cause, man. Because initially, I, whenever I heard it, I'm like, oh, who cares? I'd be I'd be still pissed about yeah. this every how I was treated back mm-hmm. in the day. But now, it seems like he wants to get back for yeah. for good reasons and for the kids because you know he he's got the platform. He can impact kids yeah. and hopefully in a positive way. So that's awesome. And, and I will say this, man you get attached to these universities It's different than like pro teams like at the collegiate level because like first off you had a choice you chose to go there you just said you're still like a legend down in jam yeah yeah so the thing is it's like you i think that's the difference between professional versus collegiate in college you have the list of schools that want to pick you i mean they want you to come there you got all the different scholarships and things like that but you can say hey you know what i want to go here and then you fall in love with it you're like, man, I came here for this reason. I love this program. I love this coach. I love these people here. And then you're there for three, four, five years. You build a connection, a bond. You're you're more open to it because you're not having to worry about, are they going to try to cut me next year? Are they going to try to trade me next year? You don't have to worry about that. So that's why you get that type of love, that type of, man, I want to be here. Whereas when you get to the NFL, you don't choose where you go. I mean, you can once you get to free agency, but then once again, the money plays a larger role in that. But when you're first getting drafted, you don't say, hey, I want to go here. I don't want to go there. No, they just pick you unless you're Eli Manning. I mean, other than that, you're just kind of stuck with it. (laughs) So, and even with that, once you get there, you're still reserved in terms of how much you want to love and how much you want to give to that organization and to that community because you know in the back of your head you're drafting somebody, you're signing somebody in free agency next year to come in here and take my spot and I got to fend them off. So as much as I want to say I love this, I'm still kind of pissed with you and we're going to just smile and say it's business and leave it at that. But that still is the reality of it. Whereas collegially, it doesn't matter who you bring in the next year. My scholarship is still intact. I'm still going to be on this team. Now, playing time, that differs, of course, but outside of that, I don't have to worry about, am I going to be at this university next year or not? Like, I think that's another reason why when you talk about how Reggie Bush just seems happy to be back, that's because, man, like, you build that type of bond is different. Yeah. And I'm sure there's there might be some financial gains for him. Coming oh, absolutely. <laughs> Come on, baby. If you can't make money at your university once you're gone, man, hey. <laughs> Hey, wait a minute now. Shout out to JMU. I love going back. <laughs> Go Dukes. So win-win for Bush and USC, yes, it looks like. And hopefully, because I listen to Coward a lot, he talks mm-hmm. about how when, when USC and Miami is down, that hurts college football because yes. it seems so much more regional. You get USC and Miami involved, it becomes a little bit Come more on, national. Man. So if Bush's presence the can bring in is, some more recruits. Sports are yeah. better with big-time programs than winning. Yeah. You would say that you would agree with that, right? Big time program? Yeah, yeah, man. Just big time programs. When, when the when the best teams, like the historic teams, like the Yankees, or like you said, the Steelers and the Cowboys, like well, when those teams are good, it's better for sports. Yeah, what's the loophole here? What are you, what are you trying just, to get I'm me at here? I'm just saying, bro. That's this, I'm just agreeing with it. We, we, we're on the same page, right? 